that is the famous prison that Marco Polo was held in for two years and where he dictated his famous book from. We're headed to Genova, Italy's largest seaport to discover more of its well-preserved history. Do we get on first class or later train? Later. Later train. Okay, so we got an hour to kill, so we stopped at this little station here. We're having some cappuccino and pizza for breakfast. Oh, we're waiting for our train. <laughs> With our luggage. <laughs> and there's no train. I just hope we're in the right spot. We're on the train. Train number uno. Seats are nice and comfy anyways. Bologna. We're in Bologna and uh, we're at platform 17. We found our way after asking so many people who were annoyed with us. And we're waiting for the fast train. Oh, there comes the fast train. And that's our train. Woohoo! So we made it and this is train number Duo. Yeah, super fast. Kind of cool. Finally, the train number three. The last one. The, the last, last one train. Yes. Yeah. 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 We know what we're doing. We totally like don't know what we're doing. Everybody else is so just gonna have a piece of bread. There's our loaf of bread. Yeah, that's cheese yeah. that's left. Cheese. <sighs> There's Marina passed out. We are in Genoa. Woohoo, Genoa! And and this is pedestrian only area that we're going through, right? And this is the arch to Old Town. Haven't even left the block and we're already in the stores oh, no, shopping. Look, it's scouting out the purses. Scouting out the purses. Yeah. Oh my god. That's yeah, so they were, so. we're looking for direction and tell them what happened. So we're lost, but then we look around and we found that we're actually right on the street we're supposed to be. Right there. Yeah. Via Saint Vicenzo. And we're good. And we're, we're so on the good. Way we to, don't we're, even know it. That's right. We're so good. And we don't know it. <laughs> we don't even need to read maps. Who needs maps? Follow. Just follow the instinct. <laughs> that's beautiful, though. That building. Look at this. Geneva's old town is rich in Renaissance palaces, amazing old churches, tacos, frescoes, narrow alleyways, a treasure behind every corner. So we got here to the main square, and they're having a marathon. We're in Plaza de Ferrari, and in its center is the iconic the Agora Fountain. There she is, in the middle of a square, taking her photo. Sticking, never mind blending in, sticking out like a sword thumb. Statue of Giuseppe Garibaldi, an Italian general, stands in front of Teatro Carlo Felici, the Opera House. We're here, Plaza Le Ferrari. And we want to go here. We're walking along the Arts District in Genoa and this is what we stumbled upon. So. Black and white it's Absolutely a beautiful. Located in Piazza San Lorenzo, it is the oldest square dating back to the Middle East. The cathedral is Roman Catholic, dedicated to St. Lawrence and in the seat of Archbishop of Genoa. Cathedral di San Lorenzo, one of the most famous landmarks. And the architecture and the detail work is just stunning here. Just stunning. I think this is the most fabulous building I've seen on my trip so far, hands down. This 12th century medieval building incorporates Romanesque and Gothic style. So this here was around when Marco Polo was around. It dates from the 12th century. In its museum underneath the cathedral lies the sacred bowl, which is supposed to be the chalice used by Christ during the Last Supper. The old town was rich with architecture in every turn. Geneva was named after the Roman god Giano, protector of passageway, and that is why you will see around doorways they're richly decorated with saints. We stopped at Plaza di Giorgio for some authentic pizza margarita. Ooh, yummy. This is really good. Wood fire. 
delicious crust. Oh, so we were eating pizza, and then we turn around, and right behind us is this. The Marco Polo prison. Behind me is the prison where Marco Polo was kept. On this side is the administrative building. That's where the Maritime Center was during his time. And then, of course, through the years, it changed and played various roles. He was jailed in 1298 during the wars between Genoa and Venice for the dominance in the Mediterranean Sea. So here we are in front of the prison. Well, we've come a long way to get here, um, and we're going to do something really exciting. We're going to touch the building. Yeah, because this is the building where he was held prisoner for two years. And this is where this wonderful book was written that changed the way we saw the world. It was the first travel book, and it was the second bestseller after the Bible. Think yeah. about that. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. All what because of this prison. What if we got any royalties, eh? Huh. I, bet I bet not. Artists always get screwed. They do. That was the door. It must have been led and chained through that door. There is a little Marco Polo signage. Imagine a prisoner of war. Yeah. How humiliating, you know. In 1298, when the Genoans advanced on Venetian, right there in front of Portula, which was under the Venetian rule, an epic battle was fought. This is where they captured Marco Polo and threw him in jail. It was so weird to touch the building. He was actually in this direction. history there is. Yeah. I can just imagine how life must have been for him, being a, like a noble man who's well-traveled, being stuck in the prison cell, overlooking the ocean and not being able to touch it, to feel it, to be on it. The front of the building is now used as the headquarters for the Port Authority, Porto Genova. And underneath it, it's a bustling market full of merchants that'll sell you just about anything. Fantastic. So Genova was a major uh, power point because of its harbor. The harbor controlled the ships going in and out and it was a trading route and as such it became a major power player. Its grand harbor and massive shipyards go back to the Middle Ages before the rise of the Roman Empire. Back then it competed with Venice and Dubrovnik for trade. So Porto Soprano was the entrance of the medieval city after it was totally enclosed, 1155. Today it is the only remaining section of the once massive wall built around Genova. It stands on top of St. Andrew's Hill overlooking Christopher Columbus House. The great explorer Christopher Columbus was born here in Genova, a century after Marco Polo. These are the cloisters of St. Andrea, the only remains of an ancient monastery dating from the 12th century. They form part of a wall of houses attached to the house where he so lived. we've come a long way to see this place as well. Christopher Columbus was inspired by Marco Polo. It was a huge inspiration to him, and as a matter of fact, when, you know, when, you know, he was navigating the waters, trying to find out where the countries were and exploring the world. He used that book as a navigation aid. He had notes all over that book. Okay, jump in. <laughs> 